Namaste. Prayers and meditations. And today we will read <coughs> Prayer dated December 29th, 1913. So the year is ending. And we see very interesting, it is not just the year ending for the Divine Mother. The whole life is going to take a very different turn. 1914, she will come and meet Sri So the year is ending and how she is approaching when the past is being taken away, when the past is dying, one of the things that repeatedly we find in Mother and Sri life is to drop the past just like that and move towards the future. We are reading Shurbindo's life, you know, during the revolutionary days and we see that how much he was revered, loved and the shining star in the horizon of uh, Indian freedom movement. But when he has the call for the yoga, he just drops it like this. Same thing we see with the mother, that she is, you know, during this period when Shurbindo is... Uh, uh, you know, in the freedom, India's independence struggle and simultaneously there are also yogic experiences going on. We see the Divine Mother uh, deeply involved in learning occultism from 1904 to 1905 onwards. She is learning occultism with Max Theon. He is the Vibhuti of uh, the Lord of Death and uh, he is the guardian of the dark laws, the secrets of the dark the occult secrets which are hidden in the dark fields. So she learns from him all these things. But when the moment comes to leave all this behind, she just leaves it and she goes. when she goes to Pondicherry, she says that she, what, the renunciation is so profound, we can't even imagine. She goes from there in February 1915 and she says, I was waiting for Shurabindo to say just once that you stay and I would have stayed. But Shurabindo never uttered that and there is a reason why he did not. That we will see as we proceed because this also beautifully covers the mother's life. But at the same time when she goes to France and then to Japan between 1915 to 1920, she says, I left my psychic being with Shurabindo. So she leaves her psychic being there and then travels. That's the time when she has a severe nervous breakdown because of tending to the soldiers in the front line in, you know, during the Second Great War. But uh, this ability to drop the past completely, this ability to completely surrender at the very first look, completely give oneself, this is what we see is the hallmark of the yoga. But we, on the contrary, remain attached to the past. We want to perpetuate the past. Even when people want to uh, prolong their life, people are very afraid of death. So why do they want to prolong their life? Because they want to prolong their life with all the comfort zones. The mother once says that when people think of immortality, they think that I'll be immortal with this personality and with all my relationship, my job and everything, the same comfort zone. She says that immortality cannot be. Immortality can only be possible even at the body if one is perpetually reborn into a new life. That's how in synthesis of yoga, Sri says, to be perpetually reborn is the condition of immortality. So one by being reborn is meant is that one follows the movement of the universal becoming without falling back. This is possible at the level of the mind, heart, the vital, but it is the body completely resists because the body constantly undoes itself backward. And the mother says if it can undo itself forward, future words, then the body itself can arrive at a deathless state. So this capacity of dropping the past and moving towards the future, we see in this prayer, we read December 29th, 1914. <clears throat> oh Lord, Grant that this collective convention of the end of the year may be for us an opportunity for finishing at once 
with the whole mass of ties and attachments illusions and weaknesses that have no longer any reason for existence in our life very very profound so many truths being revealed first she speaks of the new year as a convention now you know there are people who keep arguing whether first january we should celebrate the new year whether we celebrate the vikrami sambat or we have bengali new year we have punjabi new year we have all kinds of new year in india in the down south we have it doesn't matter it's still a convention because it's people decide together from this moment onwards we have a new year now world over by and large it's a collective convention that first january is a new year See, it's perfectly fine. Ideally, it should be every day. Every day should be a new year. Each moment should be a new moment. But nevertheless, uh, I mean, the mother says, when you are, uh, when you are conscious of the whole world at each moment, see how it vanishes and how it is being recreated. When we can recreate our entire life and new each moment, then we are ready for the the divine transformation that she speaks about. But at least, world over. it is being celebrated that the whole year is going to go into the past and the new year is going to come so it doesn't matter from which date we start but we can take advantage of a collective convention this collective com- convention idea is very important like today on 5th of april uh, everybody is going to light a lamp this is an appeal by the prime minister light a lamp or torch or whatever it be together within india or there was also a kind of meditate everybody meditates on 4th april night uh, this was another kind of uh, you know message which was circulating so this one is at night 9 o'clock 9 you know for 9 minutes so it's not important whether it's not about astrology it's not about uh, belief non belief but the fact that if, uh, if human beings unite together at a given point of time see this is the whole idea of collective meditation collective prayer that if we can unite together come together all other things are being done by individuals and groups who are meant for whatever they are meant for the scientists are doing their job the researchers are doing their job the police is doing their job the the people who have been given the task of giving hope faith courage are doing their job but if we all can unite together and light up offer our energies like uh, you know uh, common energies in a yagna and aspire then the aspiration can gather many many fold and change the course of things so she is using this collective convention to drop away the past because we all believe that oh the new is going to come but new will come if we leave the past there are often people who keep saying that we are not able to move uh, towards the future well how can we if we are tied to the past so this is an opportunity to leave away the past now she also says very interestingly this past uh, whatever it was had its justification at one point of time but has no more its any further utility so we get attached to things in the past because Uh, they had their purpose now when the purpose is over and when they are passing away from us we should let it drop away so she is saying that have no longer any reason for existence in our life that time it was very real very true now it is an illusion because it has served its purpose we should be able to see through the illusion and move towards the future of course it's not easy but nothing is easy in life progress doesn't come without a price and that's what is the real meaning of the word sacrifice <clears throat> to leave behind that which is no more necessary for our growth to become one pointed so now she takes us deeper we must at each moment shake off the past like falling dust so that it may not soil the virgin path which also at each moment opens before us now how do we prolong the past sometimes we prolong it very strangely through all these thoughts of guilt so when we look back we see that you know we should not have done this we should not have done that then we go into a depression we go into a guilt trip but none of this is necessary at each moment there is a virgin path it is not that we have to carry on the 
thick shackles of the past as some kind of a karmic load. We can shake it off, but the way to shake it off is that now those things to which I was bound, those things to which I was ignorantly attached, I leave it behind and go towards the future. When someone asked uh, the mother that, you know, when we realize a mistake, uh, we have done some mistake to somebody, should we go and seek forgiveness? Uh, both of them say that is not needed. What is needed is to learn and do the needed change, course correction and move forward. So this is what is sincerity in one word. So she bids us to shake off the past like falling dust. We must at each moment shake off the past like falling dust so that it may not soil the virgin path which also at each moment opens before us. So each moment we can recreate our entire life if we can learn how to just leave the past behind and move towards the future. Man is meant for that, that's why we have our eyes pointing towards the front. But we keep turning back to look what is behind. This is what Beatrice tells Dante that don't look back if you have to go towards the uh, highest seat. So he is uh, drawn. You know, in, in India there is a saying that uh, don't turn back. If a bhut calls you, don't look back. Now bhut is not just about a ghost. It's the past. If it calls you, don't look back. So there are people who have, it's their classic examples of people who while going on this spiritual path have suddenly fallen back into the old ways either drawn by some ambition or something else and they have moved away from the path. They come back eventually at some point of time but we should know how to leave it behind. Once we leave it behind and move forward. When Charu Chandra Dutt, Sri Aurobindo's uh, compatriot in the revolutionary days, we were reading about him. When, uh, you know, his wife tells him, why don't you go to Shurbindo? Why don't you meet him? He says, no, I will not go there just like everybody uh, would go just to have some peace or, you know, uh, just to get some solace. When I go, I will go there to completely offer myself. And this is precisely what happened when he went there. He just gave himself completely. So this is the attitude, this is the spirit in which we must uh, approach the future. May our errors, recognized and repaired within us, be no longer anything else than vain mirages, incapable of producing any consequences. And may we, setting our foot Firmly on all that should no more be, on all ignorances, all obscurities, all egoisms, boldly take our flight towards larger horizons. So beautiful she is saying. What Sri says, our errors are his steps upon the way. So she is saying we should step upon those errors and obscurities and make a path out of it to move towards the future. Now how do we make a path? We step over and go further. So it is left behind. So this should be our approach towards life, not getting into this feeling and this unhappiness that oh this was a mistake, that was a mistake. Life is a growth out of ignorance towards wisdom. It's a growth out of darkness towards the light. And it doesn't happen suddenly. It doesn't happen in one moment. So it's quite natural that for quite some time the darkness will follow us. But slowly and slowly, if we steadily move towards the light, don't pay attention to it. Just let it leave behind so a day will come when suddenly we'll realize, as is given in Savitri, and darkness, fo uh, and darkness fail like a falling cloak from the reclining body of a god. Suddenly we'll see it vanish. But if we keep fighting it with it or keep prolonging it in our consciousness by ruminating over it, by feeling bad, by feeling good, even sometimes we feel pleasant, we are attached to a past, oh my god, it was such a wonderful day, those memories, mother says, beware of these memories. So some people like to go back to their albums, they keep watching their videos of the past, they keep putting their... Uh, uh, you know, house photographs of some reward they have achieved, something they have done. 
all this we should completely drop behind then we move toward the future otherwise we are perpetually attached to these memories and they pull us backward so anything that will remind us of the past we should just leave it what are they they are vain mirages and she is giving the secret of undoing the entire karmic knot it is not that anything is ineluctable in fact if we can't do it she even says something very interesting she says my child grace can completely annul karma so what we have to do she says sometimes a call is enough sometimes just a faith little faith and it can come and completely change break the chain of karma the whole cycle of consequences there will be no more consequences of whatever is the past and we'll surge into the future these are her words and she says grace can completely annul karma and all that is needed is just a little call and the whole chain of consequences is broken but that much we have to do so she says this whole idea that you know karma and the consequences this is not really necessary now she is the divine mother she is saying this but in our human consciousness very often it is very uh, not only paradoxical but in a way it is another kind of hypnotism that somehow in india we are made to believe that karmas have always a consequence by this mere belief we are perpetuating it so whenever there is something which happens we link it to some past karma this should go every moment we have to recreate ourselves this is the supramental law that law of karma is a law of ignorance there is a greater law shobindra speaks of it there is a very beautiful uh, number of essays uh, about rebirth it is it was later published as the problem of rebirth and there he speaks about the uh, lower lines of karma and the higher lines of karma and even shri krishna gives that hint when he tells arjuna that if you are in this state of constant remembrance of me abandoning everything and you take my shelter in me refuge in me and do what you may you will still be moved by the gunas but you will no more have the bondage after all what is it if karmic law is so ineluctable then this would not be true but the lord shri krishna is saying sarv dharman parityajya mam ekam sharanam raja aham tva sarva papebhyo moksha ishami masucha do the actions but taking full refuge in me the same thing the mother is saying but unfortunately between shri krishna and the mother there is a whole array of pandits who will tell us otherwise because they want us to be attached to the past and then we are so horribly attached that we end up doing prashchit now of course pandits um, their bellies get uh, full and it's okay to look after people but not this kind of a believe that anything can bind me forever there is a grace and there is a soul within and if it wants the entire past can be shaken off so this is what the mother is reminding us that shaking it off we should use our ignorance obscurity egoism they are all there in our journey to start with to boldly take our flight towards larger horizons and an intenser light so we should leave behind even the past achievements whatever we may have achieved we should be willing to leave behind and search towards the future like a newborn child that's why even this idea i am doing yoga i am a yogi a sadhak they are so detrimental to progress the only thought that should sustain our journey is a child who is forever newborn from the divine mother <coughs> a more perfect compassion a more disinterested love towards the so our past should be only a stepping stone toward the future and the future where there is a greater light a wider horizon a more intense aspiration a greater faith a more complete consecration like we read uh, yesterday's prayer and more perfect compassion only we see in shurbindo and the mother this perfect compassion this utter humility towards the smallest and tiniest of creature i mean they are their compassion is towards earth not you know we think of compassion something towards human beings but much more than human beings they are thinking about the earth earth must be saved now what is earth it's to many of us it's in earth matter we are the only people who have the right to exist on earth 
but their compassion is extending even towards inert matter because that has to be saved who knows saved from human beings and you know one place mother says india has to be saved from indians so we have this idea of compassion which is very limited but true compassion goes even to the dumb atom and matter because that is crying in dumbness mutely it is aspiring as we see in shurbindo symbol matter aspires with light life and love towards the divine and the divine responds that is the descending triangle the sachidananda and the perfect redemption of matter is in the supramental now what is where is man's role in it man can become a conscious bridge between matter and the supramental transformation this is our true destiny and our true karma should be directed towards that that i should become all of us have a little matter and all of us have a soul within and all of us have a grace above if we can become the bridge between matter then we'll be true children at once of the earth and the divine mother so we we have to become bridge between this material aggregate and between the divine so this is the true compassion which leans even towards completely dumb and mute matter and towards each atom of existence and then she says more disinterested love there should be in this love nothing that demands expects wants anything at all towards the i salute the <clears throat> i salute the o lord master of all life and i would proclaim thy reign upon earth all that should preoccupy our thoughts is the divine victory the divine reign the divine kingdom nothing about ourselves our little personal survival our little benefits our advantages no selfish thought should come only the divine victory the divine reign the divine love the divine light the divine peace the divine harmony to grow upon earth regardless of what happens to us personally and just two three lines we'll read from the next prayer because it's uh, they are complimentary just one line uh, one sentence this is january 1 1914 so this she has prayed past should be left behind how does she greet the new year <clears throat> to the supreme dispenser of all boons there is nothing which is impossible for you if you want to give everything is possible so what is she asking to the supreme dispenser of all boons to the who justifies life by making it pure beautiful and good to the master of our destinies and goal of our aspiration was consecrated the first moment the first minute of this new year so she is consecrating to the divine who can grant anything and everything and who is all the time leading life towards purity towards beauty towards goodness may it be wholly glorified by this consecration may those who hope to attain the seek the in the right way may those who seek the find the and may those who suffer without knowing where lies the remedy feel thy life piercing little by little the hard crust of their obscure consciousness so she is praying for the earth she is praying for everyone she is consecrating this first minute of the new year and wanting that this is how this whole journey should be full of this consecration and she is consecrating it asking boons what are the boons she is asking those who are seeking you seek in the right way those who are on the path 
already arrive and those who are suffering may know the real cause of suffering and your light may penetrate the obscure layers of ignorance and show them the true way and the true path